I gotta be on my best behavior. Feel the eyes staring at you. Watch out when I stare back. I feel really short today. That's good. You want you want this chair? And I'll no, stand I'm good. I'm always short, so that's why I get this chair. Is this John way, be? if yeah, John should be here. All right, it is uh, 7:04. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Welcome, John. That's all we were waiting for was for you. Yeah, what do you want to start with? Like um, Lynn will not be here again tonight. This should be the last meeting that she misses for the season. Um, but uh, she's planning on being back for next week. Okay. Um, has any, everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. There were, I noticed a couple, if I could find them. I have the mark corrections. Do you have the corrections? Yeah. That would be great. If you could read them into the yeah. record, that would be wonderful. Right. On page two, Joyce, okay. down at the bottom where it says restorative county justice program, uh, the services that they offer, there's a four, should be crossed out. You see what I'm saying? I don't have a copy. Oh, okay. Sorry. Why don't I give you this copy when? Yes, when you're done. And when I'm no, done. And I'll okay. Right back. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So page two. Yeah. All right. Then on page four. Uh, so, so restorative justice should say. It's um. Take the four out. Take out the four. You'll see it when I get. I'll bring this over to you. Okay. Okay. Uh. Then on page four, um, counselor, camp counselor, and you'll see this. That should be what the seal. It's uh, halfway down. It says Ms. Alden asked about the counselor positions. They are camp counselors and not trained therapy counselors. That counselor should be spelled C O U N S E L O R S. Okay, it's like in three places. And then on page five, the very bottom of the page, Ms. Alden questioned where the expenses are increased specifically. It, instead of are, it should be have increased specifically. Those are the ones I had. Did you have any other? No, that sounds like it, what I had. Should be this question where the expenses have increased specifically. Okay. Yeah. Two of the minutes with the corrections. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as corrected. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Abstain. Pat has abstained. The motion passes. Okay. Youth assistance. Boy, what a crowd. <laughs> Love it. Thank you all for coming, but we really need Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I come up there? Please. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dawn Schimberg, and I'm now the director of the Youth Assistance Program. Martha did step down in the end of June. Um, and I just want to, before I talk about the program, I'd like to introduce the people who are here. Yeah. Sure. Okay. okay. Um, we have Scott Hilliard. Chief Hilliard is the chairman of our board. Um, so I'll start with, with the board members who are here. Jen Adams, Detective Adams, is on our board. Um, Shannon Kruger, assistant principal of the middle school. Andrew Brash, um, vice principal of the high school. And um, we have some Tilton residents who have also are here to be, I'm sorry, who are also here for input. Okay, and I can introduce them if you'd like to. We have Megan Schaefer, um, Lauren and Carl Mock, and Chrissy Cowan. Thank you all for coming. So I trust that you got my corrected page. 
There is a correct page, um, 10-7-2011, is that the one? Yes, 10 7 11, yes. 10 7 11. Do you have that? that? It shows that I don't think Jane. I don't on have the back, it. Jane. Thank you. What's the number on? The proposed 2012 budget uh, should be $96,070.48. Right. I may have it. Okay, no. I do. No. no. You got it? I got it. Okay. The Youth Assistance Program has been a um, intermediary. Basically, we work with the, the children who are in danger of becoming... Exactly, exactly. Becoming delinquents, becoming... You know, I want to make sure, for the record, that okay. we have we, proper terminology. For okay. At-risk youth. Yes, it is for at-risk youth, and um, we do have a juvenile court diversion program. So um, some of the young people have committed offenses in the community and are re either referred directly by the police or by the courts for our diversion program where they go in front of a juvenile review board which is comprised of volunteers. Um, they tell their, you know, why they're there, what brought them there, and then they work under a contract to um, make amends. That's part of our program. We also have a drug and alcohol early intervention program called The Challenge, and those are for young people who have committed an offense that is um, involving drugs or alcohol. It's also for young people who might be struggling with those issues on their own. Okay, um, we have an anger management program, which is also for violence prevention. And um, we also offer other programs like a, we have a bullying program, we have a tobacco education, and um, we offer a positive decision making program. So we do a lot of prevention work as well. So that's pretty much the other half of the program. We are currently working with all of the sixth graders, one class at a time, <laughs> okay? Um, so we will see all of the sixth graders over the school year to do an outreach and to do a prevention program in the school. And we also do um, a follow-up program with the eighth graders. So I'll be seeing all of the eighth graders, and that's just for sh uh, four classes. But um, we work a little bit, kind of to give them a little booster on the All-Stars program that they had in sixth grade, but also to get them kind of ready to go on to the high school. So we do some teen law information and things like that. So mostly you're working with the children that are in the middle school, eighth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth graders? We work a lot with the high school students, um, so I do go in the school there to meet with kids, but we don't do um, classroom work in the high school. So you're being more proactive with the middle school than you are with the... Yes, Pat, that is the plan. Um, however, the high school students, um, you know, would qualify for any of our other programs. They can stop in just to get support or talk, and I do work with some who um, have referred themselves. Now, I noticed that you are the secretary for the restorative justice program. Is that correct? No, I am the secretary for the um, New Hampshire Juvenile Court Diversion Network. Okay, but that's under the restorative justice program, the Mel Belknap County Restorative Justice Program, correct? Actually, the restorative justice program in Belknap County is under, well, is a member of the network, as, just as like our, the youth. As the, the YAP is also. Also, yes. And they use you to help in a proactive way as opposed to their their department which is really reactive because the kids have already committed a crime. So you're you're to prevent that from happening. Yes, that's and that's how they use program. you. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear. Um, another question I have, last year there were two of you. Yes. And now there's only one of you. Yes. One of the things we were discussing earlier. How is that going to work? Are you are you going to be able to be effective as one person? I believe so. We've also been taking steps to um, see if we can secure through the work experience program through um, Belknap and Merrimack CAP. There is a program that has um, 
people who are in need of gaining work experience. So um, we've already spoken to them. I've already interviewed a possible candidate who would be able to work 20 hours a week. Um, that person would be doing secretarial and reception. And, uh, and that would be a help. Um, right now I do have um, an intern signed up from PSU who is a senior this year who will be doing um, an internship in the winter and I have an intern for the spring. So we are getting some help, Jane. Um, we do have um, a little less work because we right now are not serving San Mateen. Um So that has changed. And also um, there's been a change in the curriculum at the school. So um, in years past, I've done a lot more classes with the sixth graders. They've actually changed that in order to do more academic work. So my time there has been reduced, but I still am working with them. Now who's your liaison in the school system? I work very closely with Shannon Kruger. Um, who's here tonight, and I work very closely with Elise Smith, who's the school guidance counselor. Okay, that's, that's Thank you. You're welcome. Don, how do you break the 57.44% and 42.56%? How do you okay. break that out? Um, we were going always historically by the school breakdown, and um, when San Bernardin ceased to be involved in the past years, we kind of re did their portion and redistributed it amongst Hilton and Northfield. So um, again, doing whatever the school formula was. Is that, is that clear? No, I don't follow It's not that. clear, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay, so let me really think in my brain here. Um, if Northfield um, funded us two years ago under the school formula like 40%, and Tilton did 30%, Okay, and um, that would leave another 30% for San Mateen. Then when they ceased, when they stepped out of the program, we took that 30% and broke it down among those same lines. And when you say this, you mean the school funding yeah. uses two, two parts. They have the uh, students and then they have the equalized valuation portion. Mm -hmm. So did you... You take a combination of both to come up with a fixed percentage? Is that what you do? We did, now Scott, I'm trying to think. Two years ago we did that, we used the equalized percentage and we got it from the school. They broke it down for us and they said, you know, this would be Northfield, Tilton, and Samberton. And um, we have continued using that over the last but couple of years. But you must be using the, the, uh, the student population also because if you're yes. just using the equalized valuation, Tilton is yes. much greater than... Yes, we're doing both. Okay. Mm -hmm. student comes into trouble. You take the case on or... No. No, we don't. Um, if a Samaritan young person is referred to us for court diversion, we would need to um, refuse that, and um, it would probably then be sent over to the Belknap County program for juvenile court diversion. Okay. Right now, um, the only program that we do take people who live outside of the area is for our drug and alcohol program. We've done that for probably 15 years now, but they are charged a much higher fee. Yeah, the total drop in your request is $50,000. Everything else is, yes, yes, that is the, the reason for the decrease. Everything else is level funded? Everything else is level funded. Um, we had moved last year, mm -hmm. and um, so the reduced um, expenses in rent kind of dragged behind because we had moved in the middle of the year. Okay, but we are currently at 291 Main Street, and um, that has been a savings as well. The travel's down for $400 also. Right. From I, not in the school, but with them. 
with the with the I, I know what you're asking. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. You get extra money for that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I do have the numbers right here, and I'm sorry I didn't print off this for you. Um, there were 75 in the prevention programs, which was school and office. But other than that, there were 38 young people. And is that total, or is that just the grand total? This is this is just Tilton. 38 Tilton. Right, and those kids were. Um, case management, you know, they were referred for offenses or um, difficulties at the school. And what kind of, what kind of um, activities do you have them perform? As far as contract items or? Okay. Um, for, if they go in front of a juvenile review board, which most of them do if they've committed an offense, um, they're frequently asked to um, make an apology if there's a victim involved, pay restitution if there was um, a damage. Okay. Breaking bulbs on the truth. <laughs> yes, exactly. Perfect example. Um, they will be asked to do, required to do community service work. Um, frequently they'll have projects that require them looking into what would happen to them if they committed another offense. Um, depending on the situation, I mean we use things like one young man right now, he's 11, is looking into um, healthy activities and so he needs to look into at least three that he might be interested in and then take steps to pursue one. Um, sometimes we have them do something um, nice to, for their mother or father, okay, especially if their parents have really lost a lot of time of work and, you know, given a lot and um, it has to be deemed nice in the parent's point of view, okay, not just the young person's point of view. So, um, but there's a lot of um, different types of items. They may be required to take part in the violence prevention program or the positive decision program. So sometimes they will take part in those programs if it looks like it will be useful. And there's some community service work as well. Yes. What would be an example of community service work? Well, one of the examples um, that I think is, is often um, very noticeable are the sunflowers that we have across from town office. Of course, they're not there right now. Um, but the kids planted them from seed. You know, we got permission to continue to plant there. We've had them there for three years now. Um, sunflowers don't require a whole lot, but they, the kids do take and plant them water them, take care of them, weed them, do everything. Um, take care, you know, when the hurricane wiped out about half of them, they came and took care of the debris. Um, we gave flowers to people here, um, some of the businesses. So um, it's kind of nice because they get to see it from beginning to end. So that's just one example. Um, we do do trash cleanup. Um, we've done May baskets. You know, the kids have helped, um, well, they helped at the auction a little bit with the tables and chairs. Um, they've worked the, the Halloween, you know, helped handing out the candy and things to the kids. So we do try to get them involved in the community. They break the leaves for the seniors? Yes, yes. They've, they've helped here at Town Hall as well. We've had a couple of, uh, couple, couple of youngsters where they've done, um, digitized a lot of the... Uh, town reports, what was it, 2001 on, we have now 2001, back to 2001, uh, digital for the town reports. So there's a lot of that that, that they've helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was very impressed with the young men you had at the Taste of the Trails, too, helping yeah, exactly. to clean up. Yeah. Very polite young men, very respectful of you and uh, the rest of us as well. And they worked very, very hard. And I was impressed with the fact that none of us could figure out how to get certain tables out, and they were able to stand back and, and assess how to do it and to do a very good job of doing it. Mm -hmm. well, good kids. Minds. <laughs> Younger yeah. minds, yeah, that helps. <laughs> Must be it. <laughs> and sometimes the projects vary too on age. Like I, right now, I'm working with a few younger um, offenders, and uh, one of them is doing like a pet food drive. So he's done posters, and he's got the bins, and he's got locations. So he's working on that, and uh, his he does like animals. So um, we're hoping that 
sometime after the holiday in January that whatever he's collected, he can take over. I'll take him over to probably the Franklin one because it's close and uh, make those so drop What is the age of the 30, 38 children? What is the age from low to high? Probably like 11 to 17. Yeah, so it is the whole the whole range and they kind of go in waves like this. Sometimes I'm over at the middle school a real lot, sometimes I'm over at the high school a real lot. Without, um, will you be basically working this on your own? I know you have plenty of volunteer and other assistance here. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be able to, to do this to stay on? Is this going to stretch your resources beyond what you're capable of? I've been doing it since June now. And I think the summer was, um, because the summer isn't as rigid as uh, the rest of the year, I think the summer was a good time to kind of put things into place so that, yeah, I feel very confident. And if you lost more funding? It would depend on the amount. Um, right now we've already met with the Northfield um, selectmen and they seem very supportive. So. Um, what I would want to do would be to fulfill any, you know, obligations we have to the best of our ability, dependent on what funding we have. Does anybody have any other questions? Are you still going to try to get funding or support from Samberton at some time, or have you dropped Yes. That? No, we didn't drop it because um, it would be a good, you know, um, it, it was good when they were together. I mean, because then all the Winnesquam school district, all of the young people in the community had the same opportunities. You know, so um, I think we really think that would still be ideal. So um, we did put in a request to them. And um, I don't know what to expect, but we also want them to know that the door is open. So. Yeah, when, would it affect the numbers if you were able to get Samerton, I mean, in the future? Would you still be able, you know, you said that you were able to handle the load because of the drop of Samberton students out of the program? Um, what we did um, to, in the request to Samberton is made it clear that if they were to come back on board, that um, we would need to hire a part time person. You know. How would they be planning on paying this receptionist position that you're looking for? It, you don't have any money in here for that, it would be an unpaid. Position? No, um, it's a program through CAP, and they actually are paying, would be paying, that 20 hours a week. That's the intern you were talking about. It's, it would actually be a part-time employee, and um, it's through the work experience program, so their goal is to help people who are having difficulty. And these are people who are, um, I think they're primarily single parents who are having trouble finding employment um, and want to gain more work experience so that that you know, that will add to their credentials. Um, and so it would actually work quite nicely because that person would probably be there during the school hours while, you know, their children are at school. So, and the secretarial and reception work would, would still be very useful. So we wouldn't be paying for that out of town funds. Okay. Sure, did you have something yeah, to add? If, if you may, I don't know if we all have to sit in one chair if I can, <laughs> if I can <laughs> Most of you who know me know I've, I have a problem being quiet. So, but I did want to uh, clarify just a couple of things. Scott, you had a question about um, Samberton's, the town of Samberton, um, how Don was handling the workload without the town of Samberton. That's been my concern, and Don would tell you that um, several times I've expressed to her, in fact, maybe monthly we talk about how she's handling it. Um, I think that she's doing very well, but the board uh, has researched uh, having interns to assist her uh, as well. Um, the decision to uh, ask the town of Samberton to uh, rejoin our organization this year was discussed at length uh, during the board. Um, and I supported it partly because I've heard from a number of Samberton residents who have children in the school system who do not have access to any programs uh, or any assistance um, and without becoming unpopular, um, nothing is, is getting done for them. Um, we have members of the school uh, that are here who are an integral part of the referral process of this program. 
who I won't put them on the spot, would probably tell you that they feel very uncomfortable uh, in the school system dealing with a child from Tilton or Northfield, referring them to this program instead of the juvenile justice system, um, and then a child from Samaritan, and it's very difficult for them. Um, I think most of you who know me, I've been in law enforcement 32 years. I've been the chairman of this board since 1996, I think. Um, some days they probably wish that would have changed, but um, I have a, a strong belief in this program and I hope uh, the town of Tilton, as, as the town of Northfield, will continue to support it. We hope that the town of Sandman will join us. If they do, we will have to revisit the issue of uh, additional help. Um, when Martha and Don were doing it together, uh, with the three towns, uh, there were times when um, they were overloaded. As most of you know, um, caseworkers have a caseload. Well, um, you're looking at our caseload. But I think, speaking on behalf of the board, we do have other members here. Dawn has done a fantastic job having to take over and handle it herself. But um, I think this is a terrific program. Uh, it, its inception in 1972 was designed to prevent from inserting kids into the criminal justice system, the juvenile justice system, uh, as, as one of many facets, but probably and very importantly is uh, the cost savings that we express to the communities. Um, I can tell you as the county sheriff, um, dealing with uh, 10 different courts in my county, um, the court systems are overwhelmed with juvenile matters. Services at the state level have been cut. Detective Adams is here from Northfield, and she'll tell you, uh, and, and uh, Lieutenant Paulus from Tilton. Uh, the CHINS program, the Child in Need of Supervision program, that for many years was um, a, a super important piece to parents who had out of control children and should not be in the delinquent mode, if you will, um, is no longer there. Funding has been cut. There are no chin services. Dawn and in the, in the school officials and the local police, I'm sure would tell you that Dawn and her program uh, and who we can get as volunteers are the chins programs for the towns of Tilton and Northfield. With that, I'll stop, uh, take any questions. And I didn't want to jump in and, and Dawn's doing very well. I just, I wanted to make sure that when I asked you um, for your support of this program, it's crucially important for the children of our communities. I believe in it, and if I didn't, I wouldn't be here before you, and I wouldn't be asking for your support. Because I know there are other people who talk a lot, a lot less than me, so. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Lastly, I do have um, a paper that might be helpful. Um, it does outline some of the services that we offer that Belknap County Youth Services Program doesn't offer. I mean, we all do the juvenile court diversion, and they do have drug and alcohol um, intervention as well. Um, but this might be useful too. Okay, so okay, great. may I pass them? Can I take a couple of answers from you if you have them? Yes, we may. I think I have enough. Scott, you're welcome. Oh, thank you. remember it doesn't call. Oh, you don't have the call. <laughs> thank you, Nan. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. This is what this is. Oh, the difference is so excellent. So are there, are we, I think there's a couple more questions. Oh, I'm sorry. When would you find out if Samerton's going to be on board with this? Samerton, um, they have a different fiscal year. And um, so because of that, their whole process lags behind. Um, so I don't even think the budget committee is going to be looking at budgets until like February. We probably wouldn't have official word until their town meeting in May. Okay, however, um, it is clear too um, in the papers that I um, gave to them was that, you know, Tilton and Northfield would then receive money back for things such as rent, okay, which is now being divided between the two towns. If Samberton comes back on board, then it's divided between the three towns, you know, as are the other, you know, um, things. Yeah, that was my next question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I would, if you, if you folks wouldn't mind, I would love to hear from the school's perspective on how uh, the YAP program works or not work for them. Uh, 
if, if you wouldn't mind. You said you had a school, school representative. We have two folks from the school. That would be wonderful for me. Yeah, that would be that would be super. I'm gonna go to the microphone. Yeah. Um, sure. I'm Shannon Kruger. I'm the assistant principal at the middle school. This is my third year at the middle school as the assistant principal. However, I have been in the district for nine years um, in different capacities. So I did um, throw together a few things to just kind of show you directly how YAP impacts my building. Again, my students are grades six through eight. Um, you need a cup of reading. That's okay. I think, see if there's a couple there. I think there's, there's yep. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to share with you all um, the, the types of referrals that I have and the services that YAP yeah, provides. Last year I had 31 referrals that I made to Youth Assistance Program and I kind of broke them down for you so you could see how many were for attendance and truancy. Um, of course because of the state, new state law in bullying last year, that's taken very seriously and this has a very formal um, process and Dawn has a bullying component to YAP which I access for those kids who end up having formal bullying reports. I had seven referrals that involved the juvenile review board diversion or some link to court. Uh, one referral for violence prevention, six referrals primarily for support counseling and those were victims. Five referrals were part of uh, this, a school consequence. What is really nice about YAP is that it's, it is also for victims. It's not just for offenders or perpetrators. So people that are on the, the reciprocal end of some of these other behaviors are able to get that support and counseling as well. This year I've made five referrals so far. The attendance and truancy number will go up greatly because now we're in the second quarter of school. So it takes a while for those truancy or attendance patterns to develop. And now is really when we start to see those referrals um, escalate. Due to the budget cuts, as Chief Hilliard alluded to, we do no longer have chins. Uh, DCYF, there has been a lot of cuts there. A lot of our attendance concerns and some of the other concerns would be considered low priority and would not get um, looked at through that program. Some of the other fallout is that it can take months for my students to get any sort of intake or counseling services. They're on waiting lists because, I, you know, and that's just sort of an unintended consequence of the other, um, the other cuts. Really, my school works with Dawn to be really proactive. My goal is to not have these kids be in the, the court system. The other part that I feel very strongly about is that is the family component because very rarely are there kids that are behaving very differently at school than they are at home. And so I feel like the families really need support too and that's the other piece that's very nice is that I can make that referral and parents have support as well. It's also safe for them because they can talk to somebody that is not a school official so I make it very clear I'm going to make this referral, I'm going to check up. But other than that, this is your opportunity to have somebody to talk to and to have support and that's not going to get, you know, what you talk to them about, what may be other issues at your home are not going to be reported back to me. And I think parents find that sort of, you know, kind of refreshing like, oh, I, you know, I don't want the school to know everything and that's okay as long as they're able to get the support and help they need for their kid. Um, Dawn works very closely with a lot of the kids at school. She said she's in our classrooms, so they're very willing to go and meet with her because they already know her, which is a real benefit. Um, and the last thing that I'll say, since I've taken a lot of time, is that where she is located is very helpful. Transportation is often a huge problem along with parent work schedules. And we have a lot of parents that are currently working more than one job. Um, so transportation can be a huge um, issue. However, a lot of the kids that I refer will set their appointments up directly after school and walk from the middle school and then their parents will have time to finish up work or whatever and make arrangements. So that's been a real plus. I, I think that of the 31 kids I referred last year, there was only three that didn't fulfill their whole program. 
everybody else was able to get that done. And I think the proximity and the convenience of it and the familiarity with the program and with John through the schools has really helped. So it, to me, it's, it's, it's really all we have because all the other stuff that we've had over the years has been cut. And I really, you know, it's, it's really important to me to have these kids have an opportunity to get what they need now and not become part of the court systems. Yeah. My name is Andrew Brosh. I'm the assistant principal at the high school. I'm not going to repeat everything that, that Shane has talked about because everything she spoke about is, is, is also true for the high school. Um, as you know, there's a budget crunches and cuts everywhere. Um, and, you know, those numbers are really important. Um, sometimes behind the numbers, those stories are what's the more important part. Um, because one, one student receiving services through the, the youth assistance program not only, you know, saves money in the long run with court and that sort of thing, more importantly from a social and emotional level, most of the things we're referring for at the high school, so far we've had 11 referrals this year. Mostly things centered around bullying, fighting, um, anger management, anger management, you know, has been a huge issue this year. Um, the kids are feeling the budget crunches, you know, their parents are losing jobs, they feel that pressure. You, we, we see that those behaviors manifest in school because of those stressors. You know, school's hard enough. Now they have, you know, all that stuff going on as well. Um, Shannon talked about, you know, the victims. That's very important because the things that we're referring for at the high school have victims. And if these behaviors aren't dealt with, because it's an early intervention program, if they're not dealt with, you might have a student who's um, displaying those behaviors over four years and along the way, more and more victims. And that takes a toll on the kid, um, socially, emotionally, and academically. And we all know the long-term costs of all those things. So again, huge. I'm a huge proponent of, of the program. And there isn't much we have. I mean, we're really at a loss. Um, at the high school level, we have a guidance counselor who's not there full time. And I can tell you that when I refer someone <laughs> for counseling, we're, we're talking two weeks before that child can be seen. And then that's two weeks of you know, uh, further further behavioral problems, social problems, emotional problems, and, it, and it, we need to deal with it as quickly as we can. And Don being local is huge. And so there's certainly other programs in the state and the area that might do similar things. Um, we all know it takes, you know, local influences. These kids are, are many of them are staying in our community. We, mm -hmm. You see, you know, I'm new to the, you know, to the district, but I, from my short time here, I've seen how you know, there's generations that go through school. Oh, you know, I taught your, your dad and your granddad and that sort of thing. So these kids, a lot of them are staying in this community and they're learning really important skills and strategies to deal with peer conflict, anger management, bullying, harassment, things that don't go away when they're adults. And the court system is not there um, to teach them strategies at times. You know, it's a punitive thing. And punishment without intervention to teach them the skills to be productive citizens, you know, we're all at a loss without the program. How is, yeah, how is the bullying being handled? Because that's something that's come to the forefront just in the last year because of unfortunate circumstances throughout the country. Well, there's state laws now with, with regard to bullying and reporting procedures. The school district um, immediately put in place a bullying reporting process. And part of that process is naming the remediation for both the victim and the perpetrator. So the YAP program, just to bring it back to YAP for a minute, is part is often part of that remediation program for the victim and the perpetrator. But we have to show that we are doing something to teach children um, why whatever they did is bullying and to teach the victims how to advocate for themselves and um, to have strategies. So it's, it's really, um, it's something that we have to keep very strong numbers on. Every June, we have to report it to the state of New Hampshire how many reports of bullying that we've had in our school and how many are founded. And what founded means is basically that we then write a report that goes to the superintendent of schools and all um, families involved. And we have to outline every step of whatever that incident was as well as what we've done. And we have to document the follow-up. 
And that's that, through, through the through the YAP program? Um, YAP is often part of that. We have like what I call a remediation menu. It's you know the different things that we could do, and YAP is one of them, and it is often used because Don does have a bullying program, so we're able to to use that. I, I can tell you at the high school level, um, you know we do the investigation if it is found to be bullying, um, unless it's something that's clearly criminal that needs to be acted upon by the court system right away. I can tell you that I refer to YAP every single mm -hmm. time. And, and we see, see success um, from that program. Does anybody have any other questions for the, Does anybody have any other questions for Don? Or uh, no? No? All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. Do you have something you'd like to? I, I just wanted to add one quick thing. If, if it's still open. No. If it's still open. Sure. Okay, well, the chief had asked me to come, um, and so I'm doing as the chief told me to do, and I just uh, want to tell one, you know, one, my relationship with the youth assistance program, you know, I've been a police officer here since 1984, um, I've, I was, you know, go back quite a ways, and I, I've known Donna Moth for a long time, I know they do a lot for the kids, and, some of the, one of the best stories that I can think of when I think of it was driving down the road with my daughter in the car. My daughter graduated from Winnesquam. She was valedictorian. You know, she's at UConn. She's doing real well. But she, at this particular time, she's like 15 or 14 years old, maybe 14. I just remember it very distinctly. We're driving down the road. She says, oh, there's so-and-so, this girl that's walking on Main Street by herself. Um, and she says, there's so-and-so, what a loser. And I just said, you know, honey, I said, if, if, if you didn't have the mom and dad that you had, you know, you might not have turned out the way that you turned out or are in the process of turning out. The girl, I knew the girl that she said that about. I know the girl's name. I know how she's doing. I referred that girl to the youth assistance program for something that was very minor that wouldn't have been... Um, worthy of going to court. See, a lot of these cases, they get referred to the Youth Assistance Program. If it's not a crime, you can't take someone, these kids to court. You know, it has to be a criminal offense. So a lot of the, a lot of your disorderly conducts are like violation level offenses. But this girl is doing, um, she said to me, she said, you know, she thanked me for sending her to Youth Assistance as an adult. She thanked me for sending her to the Youth Assistance Program and she said she didn't know how her life would would have turned out if it hadn't have been for Don Schimberg. And I thought to myself, wow. You know, I almost started crying. So that What bigger compliment could you have than that? Um, but that's just one story of, I mean, I, I referred tons of kids. I never checked back with them and said, hey, you know, how, how did it go or how are you doing? I move on for the next problem. So that was really all I wanted to say was, you know, I think that, I think the youth assistance program, specifically the people that work for the program, really make the program, and I, I think it makes a huge difference in the young people in our town's lives. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah. Is there anything else, anybody? Would you like to say something? Come on up and tell us who you are. Don't be nervous. <laughs> I'm Christina Gowan. Um, of course, I'm just a 17-year-old girl. I don't know like all like the smart words to say about the program, but okay, you heard me earlier. I couldn't yeah, out no. of my mind. Well, this program. I moved here when I was in fifth grade, and I've been going to this program since I was in sixth grade. I took a girls' group. I went there and she not only helped me with like self reasons, but she helped me like become who I am. So it's not just like the drug and alcohol, it's not just like the big picture, but it's so much more than that. She's like, I live above where she works and I can just stop and be like, this is how my day is. And she helps me with it. It's not, and then, I don't know, like I took a drug and alcohol anonymous group there and that was a big help that was like 
what made me who I am now because it made me realize like I'm more than my mistakes even though I have them still there but at the time I didn't have my license I've been working two jobs I'm going to school full-time and if the program wasn't there like if the program just all of a sudden wasn't there disappeared or just was never made I wouldn't be able to go to Laconia I wouldn't be able to go to Concord I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff that I would have been able to if the program was there and it was and that's like everything she's not only a counselor she's not only that she's a friend to the people that she works for and that she works with Dawn definitely has changed my life and I can say that firsthand she has and she's amazing at what she does and she can definitely take it on <laughs> well I don't said. know what else to say but <laughs> very good thank you Any other questions? Any other comments? Yes, yes, I would like to make a comment. My name is Megan Schaefer. My son Alex sees Dawn, and he has been going to see her now for about two, three years, something like that. Um, wasn't very troubled. He just had a lot of issues, and he sees Dawn. And last year, he graduated from eighth grade, and he got the American Legion Award for good citizenship. Uh -huh. And I really feel that part of that is from being able to go and see her and have an outlet that he's able to speak to somebody that it's not gonna, I'm not gonna judge you. You're who you are and I'm gonna take you as face, as face value. You know, there's, he feels comfortable and that is the most important thing for him. And I continue to want him to go and see her and he's now in high school and you know they talk you know but every other week he goes and sees her and you know they talk on the phone and Don will text him say hey don't forget are you still coming today and he can't get to other places he feels very comfortable with her and the program, it would be a great loss to the community if the program wasn't here any longer. So I just wanted to give you my piece. Thank you. Thanks. It's an important piece. Thank you. <laughs> All right, come on up. <laughs> Carl Mock. Um, my son Christopher, he, uh, gotten into some trouble last year and if it wasn't for the program that you guys have in place he would have been put into the system and that's it he wouldn't uh, it just would have been a punishment instead of learning what he did was wrong and what he can do now to make it so that would never happen again and I just want to say that if it was to go to Laconia or something I wouldn't be able to get him there you know my work schedule and my wife's work schedule he would just, there would be nothing for him. And without that program, I just think it would be a sad loss to Tilton. So you see a change in him? I do. I see a big change and I mean, he just, he understands what he did was wrong. Where if it wasn't for the program and he was to go, you know, into the system, it just, it wouldn't have had the impact. You know, it would have just been a punishment instead of learning, you know, this is what I did this is why you don't do it you know and I, I just think and he gets along so great with with Dawn that you know she's just a awesome person she's stopped by the house you know a couple times to check on him and you're not gonna get that sending kid to Laconi or a Concord you know you're just gonna have 50 75 more people added on to you know something else where we get something someone here that you know the kids get personal with and you know it's just a good thing to have. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To build on what he said from the local police standpoint, that's what we want is these kids to learn that what they did was not okay and why. And then we don't have to deal with them down the road and their lives change. Mm -hmm. And that's our job is to rehabilitate and make sure this stuff doesn't happen anymore. So without that program, we'd be at a loss too because what else? We either, they're either delinquent or they can go to the program and learn something. Well, it, it's great that these kids have the parental support as well because that's a huge thing. If you, if you don't have two parents that are behind the kids, 
these sport diversion programs don't work. You have to have the support of the parents behind the kids. It's huge. And if you've got parents that are at odds, it makes it that much more difficult for these kids. Yeah. I, I understand that fully. And stuff. So kudos for the parents in the audience. Kudos for the kids who are going through the pro programs and making a change for themselves and taking it and making it a positive spin. And we are glad that the program is there, that it has been there. And kudos to Don. And as a budget committee, as a budget committee, I'll tell you, it, it's important to have you people come and talk positive about it because that's what we set up here and do. We look at the value of the dollar that we're asking the taxpayers to put forward. And if we have nobody show up, we have no idea. I mean, is the program actually working or isn't it working? I mean, it's positive feedback like this is what we're looking for. And unfortunately, a lot of times we don't get that. You know, people just don't take the time out of their time to come in and, and explain and and put their personal feelings forward of what, what's happened to them. Thank you for listening. Yeah. I think as a selectman in the last three years, and you, you look um, liaison to the police department, you you hear and see the uh, 20 to 40 year old group that are that are back and forth like a yo-yo into courts and out of courts and I think that that the work that Don is doing the work that you folks are doing are preventing that from from happening to these kids now I see the work I see it right there in front of us and I see the changes in a lot of uh, youngsters that have come here that have in, in the past year or two and I've seen them elsewhere you make a difference and that's really uh, like um, you said about your son you know and instead he would be up in Laconia or Concord and he'd be mocked for life instead you make a difference in his life and that's that's what counts and I think that's really what counts and then they're not roaming the streets back and forth in a yo-yo into Franklin back and forth. Can I just say one other thing? I think that we're all in this group very fortunate to have the program because it allows us to all work together. And that's not something that's found very often. You know, very, it's usually very segmented. School, court, police. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all work together. Mm -hmm. Parents, kids, Dawn, schools. And that's just such a tremendous thing to have in a community. And this community should be proud to have that because it's, it's not very common. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Get some lunch. Mm -hmm. You got one? Restorative justice, thank you for coming in and being so patient. <laughs> yeah. Do you really want to talk to me now? Come on. Yes. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I talk to you you're not looking for any money from us so well that is wanna... that is true it, it, that was some pretty moving stuff that was mm -hmm. nice. but we know that there's also probably some uh, overlap in services that is going on and it, it would be good for us to know sure we can talk about that yeah my at the end of the day we are looking at the bottom line if I can have a couple I... more oh you want to pass them that way that'd be well, great I just want to have a couple yep that's fine I didn't catch your name. I, I know I... First name is Brian. Last name is Lowens. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and my golfing buddy, Scott, invited me to uh, to come speak to you folks. Is you at the county administrator? you want to bring her forward, too? Yeah, can she come, too? Yeah, do you want to come, come up front? We got another chair. Come on up. We'll be cozy. The only one left over there will be Sandy. You want to come up, too, Sandy? <laughs> <laughs> Feeling left out? Hello. Hi. And your name? Deborah Shackett. Hi, Deb. Hi. I'm fine, thanks. How are you? 
So when uh, Scott approached me uh, about coming to the budget committee meeting, it was basically to, to talk about the services we offer. So I thought what I would do is bring the brochure, and in the brochure on the back, there's actually a little bit of history that might be helpful um, just as we look at this. But So we were called Belknap County Restorative Justice. We're a county program, and we started in 2001 and Youth Services Bureau in Laconia that uh, I might leave out a town or two, but they essentially serviced uh, Laconia, Belmont, Guilford, uh, Gilmanton, and Alton, I think. Um, so, um, but Youth Services Bureau was also the organization, it was Peter Brigham at the time, that was the director. He was struggling with um, second-time offenders who really shouldn't be in the court system but needed something more than just the uh, typical court diversion. So he came up with um, the idea of what was uh, came to be the Belknap County Restorative Justice Program. Now, unfortunately, Peter took a job somewhere else. Uh, in the time that the grant was proposed and put into place, he moved to Hillsborough, and then there was a scramble to, you know, where is this place, uh, where is this program going to be housed? And the sheriff's office at the time came forward and did that, and then hired me to, to run the program. So that's just some brief history to, to, to tell you how, um, how restorative justice got started, and... Um, and then there became some financial problems in the surrounding towns uh, that were funding Youth Services Bureau, um, stopped funding them. And they got to the point where um, they had Laconia left and uh, everything else looked pretty dicey. So um, it was suggested that we come together and, and merge. And uh, we worked on that for almost a year. And in 2010, we. Um, actually had somebody come over from Youth Services Bureau join us and we became the Belknap County Youth Services Program. Um, we offer very similar, uh, similar things now. Um, like I said, we started out as kind of a, a, another step before court. Um, but now because of those, those towns that uh, came to be with us, we also offer court diversion for the first time offense. Um, so, what we have in here is the court diversion, which um, I think you've all pretty much heard what that is. We had a upswing program that uh, came over uh, to us with the Youth Services Bureau, and that is uh, was designed to be a pre-chins uh, child in need of supervision, and I, I heard uh, the sheriff and maybe a couple other people talk about how the CHIN's funding has gone away for services, and uh, that's created a big problem for us as far as um, that program. Um, uh, and, and, you know, other people from the school were talking about some of the, the problems with, with the other state cuts. We offer the Challenge course, which is the drug and alcohol uh, education program, which is uh, essentially the same thing that um, that YAP has. We uh, charge a fee for that, and the only other thing that we provide for juvenile uh, clients is we also have what's called uh, Take Control, which is a um, it's an anger management program. Um, it's uh, five classes, and it gives kids skills so that they um, reduce their anger, well, recognize their anger, reduce it, have better communication and uh, tools to deal with their anger uh, when it pops up. Um, those are the services. I don't, I don't know if you have any direct questions. That I do. Sure. Um, on your court diversion program, yes. Uh, do you use the New Hampshire Juvenile Court Diversion ne Network? Yes. Okay. So the YAP is a part of that network. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I should point out too that um, <laughs> Martha and Dawn, I've known them for 10 plus years now. And that's what Dawn is the secretary of, right? Right. So, okay. Right. They have both been uh, very helpful to me personally and the program. And uh, uh, 
Do you refer good members of network to yeah? Do you refer them? No, we don't. Um, we don't really have any circumstances that that would happen. We've worked together on cases before. Um, but see, in Tilton, we have in the past, back when we were the restorative justice program, we have. Um, and we have referred uh, some for the challenge course as well that they, I think they lived in Samerton, um, but I'm not even sure now. But it was easier for them to, to go to the challenge course uh, here in Tilton than it would have been in, uh, in the podium. Where exactly are you? Are these programs that you were dealing with? Where are they located? We're located out of uh, 64 Court Street in Laconia, the so Superior Court Building. So you don't have building. any satellite offices at all in any of the towns. Everybody has to come to you in Laconia. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily. That's it, why you use the network, right? That's I thought was why you use this network. That's I got on off the website. Because it seemed to be Hillsborough, I think uh, Peter. You That's where Peter Brigham went. Yes, Peter's in Hillsborough now, and yeah. he's a part of the network. And our YAP is a part of the network. And right. That gives us well the network, um, hence networking. There's a lot of things that we talk professionally, so that we can get help each other, and we share forms and um, you know best practices and things like that. As far as us and satellite is more. Um, we have a van, and the, the communities we work in now, like we're not having people from Barnstead and Alton come on over to us. What we do is go to Alton or Barnstead and have our panels, like in Barnstead, we have them at the town hall or the police department. Um, that's where the contract is designed. And we try to make all the community service over in that area too. If, uh, and Alton will use Prospect Mountain. And actually now that Barnstead and Alton are together, sometimes Barnstead kids will do do stuff at Prospect Mountain too. How are you funded? We are pretty much all uh, county funded now. We we used to have some county incentive funds, but that's another thing that the state cut, so we don't have those anymore. Would you say that YAP, and, and this word was used a lot by me and by Selectman Constantino and by some of the participants, that YAP is proactive and that your organization is more reactive because you tend to get the people once they go into the criminal justice system? Um, yeah, I, I don't know, because we get some referrals from police departments directly. What I noticed uh, from what I heard, I think the way they work with the school is um, would fit that criteria. I, I, I think that is more, I mean, they still have some sort of issue, so it's not like you're preventing it, but it's it's probably as close as you can get time-wise to, to dealing with it. But it is proactive in that they go into the schools and... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah was it there? Well, they would go to you. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, well, um, I think the court diversion piece would be things that would come to us. Um, what they do in the school sounds a little different than what we do. They, they, uh, it sounds like, and a good thing, it sounds like Don is really involved in the schools um, more than we are. Um, so I, I couldn't say that we could do work like that, but the court diversion piece would probably be, you know, like the police departments could, could do that. Um, but based on what I heard, it, it sounds like she's really doing a lot in the schools, and that's an important piece. It seems like a lot of the schools part of the a good portion of this, the bullying and the anger management part. Is, did, did you I, look at the list? I heard what I was no, no, look at the list. I know the list, but she was talking about, I think, uh, or that maybe it was the principal at the high school. Or the <laughs> well, you're the one who asked about bullying. I think yeah. that's why they got off on the bullying. Because you said... No, but he was know. talking when, I think it was the gentleman that was sitting here. I didn't catch his name. Andrew. 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 Um, he was talking yeah. about the anger management and the, the parents who's yeah. at Every, home and bringing it forward to the school. Right. And he, he was saying that, you know, that, that all of those cases they refer to, yeah. Yeah. All the cases like that. All the bullying. Yeah. He said anytime he has a bullying or anger management, that's what I understood him to say, that he refers right to, yeah, with it. Uh, at the high school level, anyway. They've had one re one referral for bullying this year. I guess they had three last year from that. This. Yeah, and that was on the middle school. school. He was talking yeah. about the high school. Yeah. 
numbers. He didn't give us numbers. He didn't give us numbers. Uh, we have uh, four people that uh, work 32 hours a week. That includes me. You're active no, no, I don't work. She's the big boss. She's the county administrator. <laughs> only when he needs more money is the only time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or moral support. Yeah. Like tonight. <laughs> one, of, one of our questions as a budget committee is, are, are our constituents, are we paying in two places for the same services? And although, yeah, is close here to us, and that this is the town budget is the one we're looking at because we don't obviously we're not involved in the in the county budget, but and they're doing a great job doing what they're doing, but are we doing something wrong by our constituents by having them pay for the same service in two locations? Well, the only thing that I really see because the. The challenge course is um, a fee for service, and so I don't really see that as a, an issue for, for that. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's that's really similar is the, um, and, and uh, maybe I'm assuming you people know these terms, but juvenile delinquency court diversion is the one thing that we probably have in common that is duplicate. Um, does that make sense? Well, the court diversion would be them some a child doing something that was illegal, basically, and being brought, being arrested. Yeah, what would be a crime if, what if would an be adult? A crime yeah. and the judge saying rather than putting you in, uh, you know, a group home or or detention of some sort, we're going to put you in this program where you will do community service, you will have a your contract, okay. and stuff. So that would be the only thing that would kind of overlap would be those that that's how i see it because what um uh, from hearing what everybody said tonight it, it sounds like a lot of the uh, and deb mentioned it too it, it sounds like um quite a bit of counseling and a lot of work in the school and those are not the sort of things that um that we do it's more um more connected to the actual court diversion piece, the contracts are, are similar, things like that, um, case management of the kids. But um, that sounds like a lot of work in um, in the school and very time consuming by the sounds of it. All right, how many youths would you uh, would your department handle in the course of a year? Um, we're usually right around uh, 50 to 75 every year. I mean, this year, I, I, I just checked the numbers the other day, and we had um, 49 new cases this year. I mean, you have a little bit of, um, because you, you're going to work with each youth three to six months, and so you have a little bit of holdover from the year before, and then, you know, as you go forward, but it's 50 to 75 a year. Does anybody have any other questions? Anything? Anything? All right. Well, we really appreciate coming in. Oh, you're I know welcome. You had to wait a Thank long you. time. For oh, that's all right. A bit of attention here, but we really do appreciate you know getting all of the background, all of the information to make the decisions as best we can for for our constituents. Good. And beat him at golf. Yeah. Well, he's pretty good. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Deb. Yep, thank you. Thank you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have fun with the rest of your process. <laughs> yeah, you're well aware. We'll be of in it. to see you I soon. Know, just, I'm still smiling. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Good night. Brian. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Okay, um, we have several issues under other business, but uh, before we, well, I guess the first thing under other business should be entertaining um, a motion on, yeah, to, we know that they are providing a, 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 a very dear service to uh, children in trouble. I'd like to make a motion to accept, to fund them as requested as their request which is I got too many papers here. Forty thousand. Forty thousand, yeah. Seven sixty. 
Thank you. Can, can, can we round that up to the 88? So yeah. we haven't even done sure. that. Thank you. Okay. I can't even find can my I? sheet. All right. We have a motion and a second to fund the youth assistance program at their requested dollar amount, which is forty thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Do we have any discussion? Yes. I think it was highly enlightened tonight to have people in, and I think it's nice to have parents come in and actually say. Uh, show us the value in helping kids. I mean, if if we're spending forty thousand dollars and it keeps one kid turns one kid back the right way, that's to me that's priceless. Just because that's where we're missing in, in society. Where that's where we're missing. Right. The, these kids just uh, you know they they're at a crossroads, and if you can turn them and put them in the right direction, and they don't end up in the uh, in prison and so on and so forth. Uh, that's the time to turn them, and uh, so I, th I think that you know Don is doing a good job. I'm I'm concerned that she's going to have her hands full. Uh, you know, I'm concerned that she's been doing it a long time. Her and Martha had, but all of a sudden, when it's just one person, six months is fine. But what's going to be in another year? You know, that's the only concern that I have. And I have that same concern. I think she's doing a very out. very good job right now, and I think that's something we just we maybe need to look at next year. Is you know, and hopefully she'll get some assistance. Yeah. But I, I, I was, I think that next year when they come in, they need to bring tissues though, because <laughs> I'm, I'm a big tuppy, and I was, I had tears in my eyes when I heard some of those people speak. I think the thing that that impresses me the most is that they are very proactive. Um, you know, if I'm a parent, which I'm not, but if I were a parent, I would, I would feel that my children had a chance with them and not have to end up at the restorative justice where they really deal with some of the offenders. And, um, you know, I appreciate Brian coming in, but that that is located in Laconia. And I think that they're really filling the need oh, here. Yeah. And when I asked Brian to come in, I just wanted to yeah. we we didn't have, because you hear all the people talking, well, they provide this, they provide that. Yeah. I'd like to have someone come in in front of us and tell us yeah. what they provide so that we have a clear understanding so you're not hearing a second hand. And that was my point for asking him to come in yeah. and provide and tell us what the services they provide. One of the things I think in the future that, you know, uh, listening to Don, uh, I'm just surprised that they, the school district hasn't tried to figure a way to have her have a space at the school as opposed to down on Main Street in Tillman. That's been discussed in the past, Scott, and, yeah. and the, the reason is, is basically to get the kids away from the school so right. that they don't okay. feel like it is part of a school curriculum or school program or something it gets them into a neutral location not at home and not at school I remember so that was addressed for, it before it has okay. been addressed before. that's what I think that was one of the questions I was going to ask and then I never did yeah. just because yeah, it has it has and it's probably good that that she is distant from the school she's right. that would confuse her with the guidance counselor and you know they would be afraid she'd run and tell and you know young people are real cautious about things like that so I think it's good that she is away I, yeah I have a few things I, I noticed um, the high school he said he refers 100% of all the bullying to this program and they have 11 referrals so far the high school has no full-time guidance counselor he stated and I look at um, the middle schools had nine referrals for attendance and truancy uh, three for bullying it goes on all these referrals are all coming from the school district and for us to fund it as a town in Northfield to burden that, it seems like this is more something that should be funded by the school district or at least kicked in because we have presently, we have a, uh, we're paying the uh, school district for guidance and all that. We're also paying for a um, resource officer. And why do we need a resource officer if Don's doing all this, and the school district is, I, I just don't see. It, I was thinking about that, John, when she was, the same thing, mm -hmm. that they're here and, and why is not, and I, I thought about asking that question, but then I'm thinking about it a little bit more. It's like, this is, even though the majority of the referrals come out of the school, mm -hmm. This is really not a school. This is more of a police function mm -hmm. than a school function. So I, I could see your point, and I even thought of it myself when they were here, 
that this should be something that is funded through through the school but at the same time it really it, it, even though that's where the referrals are coming from that's the place where all the kids are mm -hmm. so that's where you know when you want to get them before they are going to the diversion program and not necessarily all the bullying is happening at the school either right. because yeah. you have um, instances where I'm fully in support of keeping you know, the program going it's it's sad that yeah. you know that all, all these bullying and all that also involves Hamilton students or and it's mm -hmm. across the board mm -hmm. and uh, what was her total? did she ever say her total number of people she took care of. She said 38 for total. Did she say 38 and 75. It was 75? Yeah, 75. No, 75 and 75, so it's 113 for total. Wow, that seems high when, when he said that, hey, what did he say, that between 50 and 75, they had done 49 this year at Belknap County. Yeah, but it, it seemed to me like they Forty nine new to a, one step up. Right, and I, I, they wouldn't be getting the bullying that. cases at the county. Yeah. Right. It almost is it's like this one here. It's almost like a crime has been committed already. Yeah, that's what... That, that was my general feeling on it. Yeah, I, that's I, what it is according so to what I've read, yeah. is that once they've committed a crime, it's this program that's so helpful. But is it, as John stated though, Ken, is it, is the school passed off the bullying to the YAD? I think it's no, because no, of the laws. Because no. the SRO gets involved in a lot of bullying, but you have to look. I think that there are different levels. I think that there, when you are at a when you are at a um, very beginning, oh, well, maybe it might be could be mis misconstrued as bullying, and maybe had a title of bullying, but is there actual no crime committed? where we can be proactive and say, let's give you some lessons in what bullying is about and so on and so forth and refer to, to Don and take, take care of that. Whereas there are some active cases going on, that's where the SRO comes said involved. They had to write out a report or something. For every, everything that's for the that state. Goes, for the state. Everything that goes through them has to go through ha, has to go through a she report. Said laws changed now. Mm -hmm. Right, the bullying laws. The bullying laws yep. changed. And yep. the high school uh, principal, assistant principal said he reports 100 percent of his bullying mm -hmm. to them. And they lie. You know, I, I think anybody is. Regardless of who you are, whether you're a teacher or here in, in town hall, anybody is. See, I don't think guidance counselors like they were when I was in the school even exist anymore, do they? But I don't should, know. When, when my son was at Winnesquam, the guidance counselor there at the middle school was just excellent, Mrs. absolutely Smith. excellent. Mm -hmm. Smith, I don't know yeah. who it was. Because like. remember, we were no, talking. They were excellent. Yeah. No, they're not. They, that's not what this was. No. Oh my God, this was ten so years ago. Them as far as in, in going to college, they don't have. So they don't have anybody. I, I, I'm just. I'm saying that off the top of my head because Pat and I, so like Constantine and I were with a young man who graduated from there um, when we were doing the food drive. Mm -hmm. And he he said that he he is in in one of the um, he's at college right in now. college now, but he didn't realize that there were scholarships available. He would have gone to Tilton School because you know that was would have prepared him better for what he's doing now. He's preparing to be an engineer, but they didn't have guidance counselors. And Pat and I both said, "What do you mean you didn't have guidance counselors?" He said, "Well, that's the title." But they don't steer you. Well, who's helping them to, to decide? What I don't think anybody is. For think the teachers. No. Well, that's crazy. no. And the guidance counselors yeah, the work in, in the middle school. We're oh. working more with I emotional issues than with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know what the school is doing, but I understand that the teachers are doing, and some well, of the, the teachers. teachers you know, when I went through high school and through school, you had a guidance counselor, and they came right. to you, and if you were. If you were getting all A's in this this level, they yeah. say, you know, I, I, you need to move up to the next level in English because it's too easy for you. They don't do that anymore. They don't do more. That. And then if you're going to go to college for this, you need to take these courses, and they'd put you over into these courses, and they'd design the courses that you had to take yeah. so that when you went to college, you'd already taken your chemistry, your biology, microbiology, so on and so forth. 
So what, these kids are just going out of whim over here. Mm -hmm. yes. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know that for a fact, but the only the yeah. only my, people that my I've talked to senior. have said that they're not real guidance counselors mm -hmm. as we have seen in the last ten years as guidance counselors as we went to school the last twenty thirty years. Maybe forty for me. I was going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe no, forty no. for me, but fifty for me. <laughs> We went to school guidance counselors did just that, but they're not that any longer. But yeah, but I mean, they, you know, they took every student in. They, the guy, we had two guidance counselors at high school. They took every student in, and they talked to you, and they went over what your course load was, what you were taking, and they adjusted it, and they moved you from one class to another. Mm -hmm. They thought it was too easy, and so on and so forth. So that they gave you aptitude tests. None of that's happening. No. Right, but that's that's um, all the school and the guidance counseling, and that's not something that's no, being provided by YAP either. And we no. still have a motion on the no. table. Yeah, could I? Um, so can we? Okay. Just I, I just wanted to say that I'm. Fully in support of it, but we really need to get the school taking over some more responsibilities off of her, or assisting in at least in funding this in some way. Well, I think part of the problem is you can ask the school to fund it, and maybe they'll put it in the budget, but it's still going to come out of our pockets. Oh, well, yeah, and but it will come out of all, all right. the yeah. whole district. They're funding the, the SRO, SRO this next year. Next year. The, the school district is? Well, that's good. Final. Yay. After okay. $250,000 worth of yeah. loss. Okay, do we have any other discussion in regards to YAP? <coughs> okay. All those in favor of funding the Youth Assistance Program at $40,888, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. Okay, next item on the, uh, on the other business. Um, last night, we got it this morning is the additional information from Jim Doan at the Pines. It doesn't answer most of our questions. I don't think it answers very many of our questions at all. Uh, it's very short and simple and, and with what he's presented to us here, I don't see why it couldn't have been given to us prior to his little vacation. Good afternoon, Joanna. I hope that the following information will be useful in your discussion. If you need more, anything more, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you, Jim. Youth Assistance Program, 19 Tilton residents, uh, $3,484 was the total dollars received for Northfield. It was 18 Northfield residents for 25.25. Teen trip and adventure camps, there were four Tilton residents with three full scholarships, five Northfield residents with three full scholarships, and seven non-residents with no scholarships, but there are no dollar amounts attached to those. Um, the proposed salary increase is 2.9%. Uh, there would be a potential fee increase if the Tilton refuse, reduces its contribution to zero, then registration fees will have to be raised by 24 to 89% depending upon the program. This assumes that other sources of income and expenses do not change. We, um, I'll say it aloud and go on record because I think I've said it most to everybody. I found his responses to our questions almost insulting because he didn't answer what we ask him, what we requested of him. That really concerns me. Um, the other thing that concerns me, and I have, it appears to me that where his shortfalls were last year is where he's made his increases this year in his requests. Um, the variance in salaries last year to date the variance in salaries is 110 percent um, these are things he can control Insurance and buildings is 189 percent, and that's with the $15,000 grant he got from 3M for the roof. For advertising and printing, it's 278 percent. In professional fees, it's 155 percent. 
then those were those are where his big increases that he's asking for in those in those categories. Do you see what I'm saying? Where he's where he's running over budget this year. He's trying to make up for it by asking for more money. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to manage those things. And I find it hard to, that you can't manage advertising and printing. And I can't see, I don't, well maybe I just don't see them in the right places, but I don't see a lot of advertising. And I would think with a non-profit, you could get a lot of advertising free. You know, the, the spots on radios and TVs. <coughs> um, I really wanted to see him come back. We asked him what kinds of programs. He said they're going to have oh so many great programs. He didn't really come back with much at all. Or I didn't think that what he came up with was adequate for what I would expect them if he wants to make a lot more money. And my concern gets back to what I brought up to him the first night that he was here. And that's what motivation is it for him to go out and find other sources of income are to find programs that are that are going to pay for themselves if we continue to give him money year after year. It's no motivation whatsoever. Well, he's got all that space over there and he he's just lost a big rent payer and head start. I would think he would be out trying to get more people and give us a list of, you know, how many people I I'm going to contact 40 more people to see if I can rent out space. Or um, I'm going to raise my rent, my fees for renting. Um, you know, but, but I don't see anything positive like that coming from him in terms of what he plans to do. I don't see a plan to move out of having the towns to support him year in and year out. In, in, in Jim's defense, and I don't know why I'm defending it, but in his defense, I would actually like to see the grants for 2010 and 2009. We look at this, we only have one number to work with. He, he raised some money, there's no question about it. Um, he had given us that. Um, he had that somewhere. The 2011 grant program? Yeah. No, not the grant. He's looking for the uh, 2009. I, had, I think I have it. I don't know if I have that number. I, yeah, if it's my fault if I don't. The other thing is that he said that operation grants are difficult, and I have to believe him because I don't know. But it, and he said this year he'd be going after more operation grants, the yeah, actual day-to-day -day operations. So I don't know. I, I'm up in the air myself. You know. I don't know many seen grants that give operation grants. grants. Well, he said there are some out there, but they're difficult to find and difficult to get. New new roof. You get a major program going. You get you can get some funding. I'd say, well, we need money for our operations. It's a little stickier. So I, I'm really up in the air on this. I, I'm really up in the air on it. I, last year we had asked for more programs for the kids after school, the middle school kids, and that. Um, we did ask that question while he was here, and he said that the. I, I'm not sure if it was he or uh, the other director there, that the middle school kids have access to equipment for basketball mm -hmm. and um, they asked if there were any programs that were set up for them after school and they said that it was monitored inside but nothing outside. outside. Yeah. So basically They're the kids the show up, They're they grab a basketball or whatever and they run outside and do whatever they want mm -hmm. and inside they're monitored, which could mean somebody at the front desk, but there's no programs. There's no, and, you know, even if you set up a, a, a competition where, you know, or something, no structure or uh, even the opportunity to uh, offer it. So that's where I, I think there was a big failure from what we primarily asked for the previous year. I also have trouble with the three percent budgeting um, salary increase. Definitely, for a nonprofit to be giving a three percent. When I when I look at the salaries that they get, and I look at the salaries of what Don gets, mm -hmm. and what she's doing as opposed to what they're doing, I, 
I really have trouble saying the taxpayers are going to give that amount of money to the Pines as opposed to giving it to the program that we see the, the results. I agree. I, I had a question a couple weeks ago when they were in front of us in regards to what is the service that that we are actually receiving from them and I don't see where this is really being addressed or where it is being addressed to the tune of almost sixty thousand dollars which was their request this year. Um, I'll, make, I'll make a point. I don't think no matter what we put in there for a number if it's outside of what their number is, we're going to have the same issue come town meeting. They're going to bring it and they're going to try to have it amended on town meeting. I agree with you, Scott. So I'm, but I but at least I get to... I make an amendment to put in the same number that the selectmen have put in their budget. I'll It's $50,000 and we'll let it go from there. Yeah, I agree with that. I was... That's so not exactly what I was going to do. Round and round and round Are you making a motion? I made a motion. And I'll second and it. We have a second. Discussion. We have a motion and a second on the table to fund the Pines uh, Recreation Center at $50,000 as that is what... The thing. <laughs> what, the, what the selectmen have done mm -hmm. with, the, with the knowledge that that they will try to most likely try to come to yeah, town yeah, meeting. Last year. Yeah. It's well, an last emotional time. issue. It's an emotional issue. Yeah, a lot it's of no people longer see. A budget issue. It's an emotional issue with that. So I think we're right. wasting our time. Just you're right. But I got. I feel better now. That I got it all out, Scott. I let you get it out. I sit here longer. <laughs> I couldn't take it okay. any longer. All righty. Good. Um, is the there vote. any? Is vote. there any other discussion? Hearing none. I'll call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. Okay, Pines, $50,000. One last thing on my list of other business. I got an email today Good one. from the town administrator uh -oh. Uh -oh. Who's that? saying, Tony, get your butt in gear. I need a letter authorizing me to make... Oh, wait, that's not what she said. <laughs> she said, Tony, can you... Can you give me a letter requesting authorization of payment of the budget committee stipend? So wait a minute. We told you to get her button gear. <laughs> wait a minute now. Somebody, <laughs> somebody told me to get my button gear. So um, forthwith, I have in all the committees and commissions. It's just I did it individually, not on us. That's personal. Part. Oh, I thought you were special, huh? <laughs> I thought I was, especially with the butt kicking part. Um, so I have a letter here um, dated today to Joyce Fuweller, town administrator, town hall, here at the town, the, this place right here. RE Budget Committee stipends says, Dear Joyce, per your request, I am authorizing the annual payment of the Budget Committee stipends. Please process these payments at your earliest convenience. Thank you, Tony Belair. Chairman, see, I can't even remember my own name. It's not just you. You're reading it. And I'm reading it, and I can't remember my own name. <laughs> With a you copy mean glasses, Tony. I have them, they're just not on. <laughs> there we go. Um, copy sent to uh, Pat Constantino, the chairman of the board of the selectmen, and Tim Pearson is the finance director. Does anybody <coughs> have any questions, comments, or concerns in regards to this? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to sign it and ask for copies to be made because the chairman of the board of selectmen happens to be sitting right here. Mm -hmm. Is there any other business? Yeah, I have other business. What are we going to do with in regards to the poll tax that we can assess on polls now? It was an article in the paper yesterday, a lengthy article in regards to um, uh, Fairpoint has gone and they were going to charge every individual line uh, a fee of 99 cents per month um, and you're going to be uh, everyone's going to be charged for that poll tax even though communities they only have out of 237 communities or 34 communities they only have 12 that are charging the actual tax to them okay that they're taxing fair point uh, they're still going to charge the customers and I know the PUC's pulled it back they're going to have a hearing on it in the middle of December but my question was, uh, how is the selectmen, or how are we going to address that? Are we going to look at uh, charging the poll tax, or what, what's our well, motion? It's my understanding that there's two different things. One right. is that for years in the legislature, um, 
assessing the value of the poles and conduits and cables and wires and everything was exempt from property taxation. They had always voted on it to be exempted. That's right. And that, that exemption lapsed. So what we did is we went ahead and we were now assessing a, putting a value on that right. and taxing it. In June, the legislation voted not to let that right. be exempt any longer. Right. right. So we put so, tax it So we do that. Okay. Now what's happening is, is that in anticipation of um, there will be legislation is coming back to give that exemption back. So what our assessor has advised all their communities is to hold some money in overlay in the event that that law is overturned and we have to return. Was that number already built into, when you look at equalized valuation, you see it with utilities and without utilities, was that number already built into the side that has good utilities? No. Choice? Mm -hmm. That was never built in? Not, well, not they, one, any they have their it? own communications tax. The state has a communications tax. No, but when you look at equalized valuation on DRA's website, mm -hmm. you'll get two values. You'll get one with utilities and one without for equalized valuation. Correct. Does the equalized valuation number that says with utilities, does that include the value of the poles within the communities? I believe it does, but I would check okay. the DRA and Okay. So the value is already out there somewhere on the poles, how many poles? Because I think whenever you hear a comment, and of course there's been a lot because of the storm damage, the poles are talked as, and I didn't realize that, but it seems like they were Verizon, now they're Fairpoint. But it seems a majority of the poles are owned by the telephone company as opposed to the electric company. They are. Which it seems just be backwards from what I would think. You know, you'd think that the electric company would have the more of the poles, but it seems like it's the telephone company. So, okay. I just was wondering how we were going to address it. Because the other issue that's out there that we're looking into is that there are some communities that are charging a tax on the cable wires that are in the town's public right-of-way. See, because right now we don't tax Metrocast for their cable and stuff on the poles. I know the town of Barnstead does. So that's something that we're looking into. But as, and maybe it's just passing the buck, but in my opinion is if you tax Fairpoint for the pole tax, the communities tax them, now they're going to go back, and if, like I don't have Fairpoint, okay, but they're going to go back and they're going to take all the poles that Metrocast, okay, or the power company has lines on their poles, and they're going to say, now we're going to charge you X, Y, Z for the use of those poles because we're paying tax. So it's going to come back to, no matter what happens, it's round robin comes right back to the poor ta consumer, the taxpayer again. Sort of like the pines, isn't it, Scott? Yeah, I mean, it comes back to charge your energy. Now I'm listening to you. <laughs> Except it reduces our tax. I know. The amount that we it pay. It reduces our tax, but to yeah. what? <laughs> so, hey, I have a motion to. Floor, it just creates. It's not our budget okay. stuff. I guess it's budget. It's going to affect the budget in the future. In the future, we'll, well cover I, that. I would imagine, maybe, Tony, because you follow the legislature more than I do, is that. The you have to, don't you? You don't have any choice. Twice because they are charged with communications tax, the, the electric company and the... Did you really expect that I listened to them? Okay, I heard the vote today. The vote was 240 to 139 and it was defeated. That's all I know. The right to work was defeated. 139. No. I think it was, it was on the news tonight. I wrote it down. You did? Okay. 240 to 139. Oh, they lost by seven then. Did they lose by seven? Twelve votes. votes. They, were, they needed twelve more votes. I know it they said that. How many they needed two fifty-two. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. We have a second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Bob did. Everybody. Everybody. Yep. Bob did. It was at eight o'clock. Uh -oh. I made a motion to adjourn it before 7. Yeah, I know. Guess we got And I seconded it. Budget pretty easy, didn't we? <laughs>
This is uh, uh, we need a chance to digest. Oh, we haven't had a chance to even look at it. And you don't have to shoot it out. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll regurgitate it a few times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's only $20,000 over the last year. Well, the, the, the question I'm going to ask you is did the uh, inspector just do the take out? that officer they didn't have last year? Yep. That they had in there? Yep. Before they came up with their figure? Yep. So they're saying they're $20,000 less. Well, actually, they're $28,000 um, less higher than they were last year. Oh, you but, know? Yeah. Well, yeah, but you know, then it's salary it's true. Line. They're just gonna, they're gonna they're do they're what they want. Yes. Because they're saying they're $20,000 down, but that's not. Right. Well, they're actually they're, more. They're more than they were last year, right. but you gotta compare apples with apples. Absolutely. Right? So we'll have that discussion. Yep. Well, oh, it's not a discussion. It's fact. It's fact. It's I not a discussion. <laughs> I think we put in 49. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good job on getting them a budget. I really appreciate it. I know it's all